Good afternoon. My name is Amani Roberts, and I'm coming to you from Los Angeles, California, right outside LA. And today I'm going to share with you 10 ways podcasting can change your life. Here we go. All right. So first I want to introduce myself. Uh, I'm a professional DJ, podcaster. I'm also a professor at Cal State Fullerton, music producer. And as of today, a author. My book, DJs Being Business, just came out today. So that's kind of a little bit about me. While we're talking here, I want to also encourage you, if you are into podcasts, leave like your favorite podcast in the comments section. Um, I'm going to go back and look at them, the comments, and see which ones they are. That's the good thing about a form like this is we can share different podcasts you like to listen to, whether it's fiction, nonfiction, please share it. In addition, I'm also the Vice President of Education for MPI Southern California. This is a picture from our weekend education conference we had in February, and I'm going to come back to this conference in a minute as well. All right, so I've been podcasting since 2008. I originally had a podcast called The Mirth Nadir Show where I would play music and interview uh, musicians from all over the world. I had the pleasure of interviewing some musicians who ended up going on to um, win Grammys and Academy Awards, um, but I was able to interview them before they got big, which was pretty cool. This is my podcast now. It's called the Amani Experience Podcast. I interview people who previously worked in the corporate space, but have left to do something more creative. One of the distinguishing features of my podcast is just that I have these cool cartoons that people love. That's one thing I do. I do them in person, and now I video them as well. We were very, very fortunate to be recognized by Apple Podcasts in February for Black History Month as a top podcast. So that was something very exciting for us. Um, this podcast I've been hosting, have been hosting it since 2017. So we're approaching three years. We just released episode 138 this past weekend. And so it's just something I love to do and I find it very valuable. I'm gonna share many of the tips with you today. So the first tip and the first way podcasting can change life is just learning. It's just a way for, for there to be like a rolling classroom, whether you're in your car, whether you're walking around the block, going for a run, in the house doing work, it's just a way for you to consistently learn by listening to subject matter experts as they interview people that are experts in their field, as well as share their expertise. Two of my favorite podcasts for learning, Design Matters with Debbie Millman. She's a phenomenal graphic designer and entered, like she's just a, a really great human. And she interviews people as well from all over the world who have done creative things and just have made creativity a part of their life. One of my favorite episodes with Debbie is when she interviewed Amanda Palmer, who's a musician. And Amanda talked to her about how she has used Patreon to grow her business. And now that was an interview about a year ago. And now a year and a half, two years later, Patreon is really big in the space. So that's just something I learned that I applied to my business. Pensado's Place is a music um, podcast. They talk to different people who are active in the music space. And I listen to that a lot. It's also um, videotaped. So you can watch it on video. Many of you heard of the Tim Ferriss show. He's and they've used all sorts of subject matter experts as well from all over the world and just different and cool people. And it's just another way to learn. So I really like to share these podcasts. Side Hustle, side hustle School is another good one. We all have side hustles nowadays, and this is a good one to learn what other people are doing and how you can apply it to their life. So learning is number one. Number two is evergreen marketing content. What I like to say is that when you have a podcast episode and you put it up, People can find it three months later, six months later, even a year later, and it's still relevant. Three, three, one, three examples that I really like to share is Shopify with their master's podcast. That's a good one. Trader Joe's has a really, really good one. It's sort of newer, but they do a good job of giving you a peek kind of behind the scenes at Trader Joe's. And then we're all familiar with TED Talks, and they have a daily podcast as well. That's good. A good point about podcasts is that if you do a podcast and you get the transcript, the SEO from the transcript can drive traffic to your website for years. And so even if you maybe you do a podcast, but you haven't added the transcript yet, I suggest you add it because it can help out a lot. For me personally, on my podcast, I have traffic from episode I did almost two years ago. I still get traffic from that one. And a recent one or one I did with Seiku Edwards, who's a spoken word poet. And I just get a ton of traffic from that. So it's evergreen marketing content. People can find you just on the randomness of searches. So it's really, really good to have this as a way for people to find you. This is one of my favorite uh, ways that podcasting can change your life. 
I just view it as a new school way of networking. It's just a way for you to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. And this is if you're a guest on a podcast as well, or if you're hosting a guest. So in this picture, I'm interviewing Laura Powers. She's like a really famous psychic. She actually gave me a live reading on my podcast, which was pretty cool too. And so I met her at a podcast conference. We talked, um, networked. She came on my podcast. I got to know her. And then ironically, my book's coming out today. And just yesterday, she interviewed me for her podcast. So it's just a way for you to meet people, network, and it really gives you a one-on-one -on -one conversation. It's almost, I view it as like a master class when I interview people. I'm taking a master class with whomever I'm talking to and the expertise that they have in their field. Another favorite story of mine is uh, Judy Howler. So I saw Judy at, um, I wanna say I saw her at WEC Las Vegas in 2017. She was a presenter there. She, she was really, really good. So I kind of followed her, kept in touch. Then I had the podcast. I reached out to her and it took us about four or five months to schedule the interview. We finally scheduled the interview. We had it. And then we got along so greatly that she invited me to DJ her book launch, which was this past May. Um, and so I went out to Chicago and DJ her book launch. It was, a, was an amazing time. And then we just kept in touch. She came to California in October, uh, had one of my students from Cal State Fullerton volunteer with her. And it was just really, really good. And I really enjoyed meeting with her and the, just the networking that we had together. It was, it was a great time and it was really, really beneficial as well. All events, number four, all events can be turned into podcasts. You'll see this picture. This is from our um, weekend education conference we had. We had Mina Harris from Uber with us. And so what happens is that we had a Q&A with her. And then when we, we had the Q&A, it's also um, it was such great content. And so what you can do is that for this one, you can, you can divide this up to like a 45 minute podcast episode. And anytime you have an event, even nowadays, especially with virtual, you have a virtual event, you're gonna most likely be recording it. You can record it. You can cut, cut it up into whether it be the keynote session, you can have a, um, that as a podcast episode, even breakouts can be podcast episodes. So although what we're doing now in the meeting and events industry is shifting, anything you do, whether it be a video, a breakout, a keynote can be turned to a podcast episode. The key is do what you can to try to get the best sound as possible. A lot of times working with companies like PSAV, they, they have all the microphones and wired up. It's really simple for them to record the audio, give you a zip drive, that's all you need. From there, you can work with a company like myself who has a team of people who will go from start to finish, whether it be um, cutting up the episodes into different podcast episodes, making sure they show up on all the platforms like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube. The bonus is if you can get video as well, then you can add the podcast to YouTube and really make different snippets from it and everything. It's very, very effective. And then I want to push you to even think further because if you're thinking of sponsorship, we're all thinking of sponsorship. If you're thinking of sponsorship, this is a great way to attract new sponsors give your current sponsors even more value by having them, you know, this podcast episode is sponsored by such and such, and they can do the post roll, which is after the show, pre-roll, before the show, and probably the most valuable sponsor opportunity is the mid-roll, which is in the middle of the show. And so I want to share with you, so on the left, my left, is uh, Vaughn Ligumon. She gave a keynote at our um, weekend, weekend conference, and it was on creativity, and it was very interactive. And even if the, the keynote, the breakout is interactive, it still works because you can prep people to, to, to say, for this podcast episode, we recommend that you have a couple of Legos with you because she did an exercise with us that had to do with Legos. So that can work as well. And so that can be a really compelling podcast uh, episode there. Then on the right is Megan. She's from Varietas Consulting. So she's a, extremely knowledgeable about wine. And so this is another example, that's why I put these two up there, of it's interactive. So we can prep you at the beginning of the podcast. We can say, okay, for this podcast episode, we recommend you have a white and a dark wine, a red wine, and maybe also, you know, some champagne so that you can go through the same exercise that she went through in the episode as well. So, of course, traditional keynotes and breakouts where there's not really a lot of interactivity, it works. But then even with the interactive breakouts and keynotes, it'll work as well. And so I just want to really, really emphasize that anytime you have an event from now moving forward, definitely, you know, use that as an opportunity to capture the content and turn it into a podcast episode. 
this is a quick sh show of the equipment you need. I also have a um, like an Amazon wish list, which is all listed. I'll share that after the presentation as well. Um, what I use is on the top left. I'm actually using that right now to talk to you. It's an audio interface from Zoom. You just need some basic Shure microphones, a computer, headphones. Um, you also need some kind of software to edit. Many of the computers nowadays have like um, Apple, you have GarageBand, you can use Ableton Live, Pro Tools, you can also use um, Audacity as a free service online. So there are many services you can use online to edit, but really the key is just capturing the highest quality of audio as possible, and then you can edit it and go from there. This is a quick list of just the equipment needed. And my, my one lesson for you is that don't try to make each episode perfect. Done is better than perfect. That's a good model when it comes to podcasts. Otherwise, you'll never get off the ground. So I really cringe. If you were to go listen to my first episode of my current podcast and compare it to now, I'm sure it's very, very different. I'm still proud of all the episodes, but I'm sure it's very different in terms of my quality and my skills have improved. And it's just important to really, if you want to um, create a podcast, get out there and do it, and you'll improve as you go along. Next. One of my, uh, another really, really good skill that will improve as you are a podcast host is your listening skills. This is a picture is when I volunteered at DJ Camp for Kids in the summer called Camp Spinoff. And we had kids in there that were doing podcasting as well. They were eager to learn. And even when we were interviewing fellow kids, their parents, you know, listening is just so important because it's 90% about what people are saying and 10% about how you follow up and you ask the questions. So um, we always love to say the fortune is in the follow-up questions, so it just really inc increases your listening skills, and that's a skill that you can use wherever you are in the events industry. So that's, that's another one there. Podcast experiences, appearances are like gold. So our picture in the top left, you know, is Elon Musk from, <laughs> and he, he was on a Joe Rogan show, and he lit up a joint, and it got a lot of buzz, and people were upset but it's memorable and people go back and watch that clip from Joe Rogan for weeks, years at a time. So he created an impact and it, it's appears as like, well, then you have like Jay Shetty and Tom Bilio on impact theory podcast. And the reason I share this one is that for their podcast, there are clips that you can take and he shares them with people. So if you're on a podcast and you say it's 30 minutes long, you can cut it up and like take five minute clips, share it. It's just like so much content you can share if it's video, audio, and just really helps to grow your media library and your sizzle reel if you're a speaker, it's very valuable. And then you can share it because we're always trying to find ways to find content, share it. And I just find that podcast experience is a goal. Plus, it just really allows you to practice interviewing. It, it allows you to meet people as well. So although most of this presentation is about you creating a podcast, I definitely don't want you to discount appearing on podcasts as well too. So if you're not interested in creating one, don't uh, discount appearing on podcasts. This can be very valuable. It's a way for you to network again, and it's just a way for you to create content that you can use yourself also. And we know how a lot of us talk about Netflix and chill, but you can also podcast and chill too. Um, there's some cool kind of fiction podcasts that are very, very addicting. You, many of you might have heard of Dirty John, which has been turned into a TV series. Serial, which is one of the first biggest um, kind of fiction podcasts that um, really blew up and did well. And then you also have like this one that I met the gentleman who was the bank robber in the Bank Robber Diaries. And that was a podcast that walks you through how I think he he like robbed 25 or 30 banks here in Southern California. And he tells you how he did it and his life before, during and then after. So that's a cool one to kind of do as well. But the whole point is it's not just about interview shows and documentaries. There's some really, really talented fiction podcast creators, and you can add that to your content library. So you don't always have to sit around and watch the TV and chill. You can go around the block, listen, go for a run, and listen to a fiction series. When we get back to commuting, it can be very addicting as well. So definitely use that for your personal enjoyment also. This is another one of my favorite points here is the underrated teaching tool. As I said before, I'm a professor at Cal State Fulton, and I try to really use podcasting as a way to, you know, reach the students that I have. Many people are auditory le learners, so they do well by listening and hearing things. And podcasts are a great way to introduce new content to people in a way that they can consume it better. Um, and so it's just a way for me to share with my students to learn. And then as professionals, 
we can learn and teach and use it as well within our chapter education events. We can use podcasts as a form of educating our members. We can use podcasts as a way to learn and teach during a session. And this comes back to using our um, events as podcasts as well, too, because if you turn to a podcast, then for people who might not have been able to attend the event, they can learn from it as well. It's a really underrated teaching tool. One of, one of the favorite podcasts that really helped me as I try to continue to improve as a professor is Jennifer Gonzalez's podcast as well. It's great. And then Guy Raz, he, his podcast where he interviews people and business creators and other people is really valuable because you can learn about what they did, their strategies as well. And I find that one's valuable also. Next up is, I mentioned this one before, one of my favorite episodes I like to use in class with my students. Some of my students are probably watching right now, so hello to you. Um, is this episode from Pensado's Place where this music executive kind of explains this really controversial topic in the music industry about uh, like black box revenue and how music and the revenue doesn't get to the proper artists. And the information that is in this podcast is so valuable. I mean, you have to listen to it like five or six times to get it all. And this is just a great example of myself showing it to the students and just we're learning about it all together. And it's really, really a great kind of content packed episode. It's the perfect teaching tool. I don't have to sit up there and try to explain it. This gentleman explains it perfectly well and it's just really engaging and I love it. So it's a really underrated teaching tool and I wanna share that with you also. Finally, for you yourself, if you create a podcast, it just does tremendous things for you in terms of establishing yourself as a thought leader in whatever industry you're in. Um, like one of my favorite podcasts, Marie Forleo podcast, she has come and been working at this for a long time. She's internationally recognized. She's a thought leader in like the personal development space. Another great podcast straight up by Trent Shelton. There are just many, many people. If you want to brand yourself, which now is probably more important than ever, and create your own personal brand for yourself, starting your podcast, and it can be a solo podcast where you just share your thoughts on something. You could be an interview-based podcast where you interview people. It's just a great way to establish yourself as a thought leader. And as you continue to be consistent with doing a podcast, it will it just will further entrench you as a thought leader. It's, it's proven, it works. This is one of the reasons why I started my podcast because I wanted to be known as more than just a DJ. And then after you know 138 episodes, I've had a chance to speak two times at podcast movement conference, which is a large international conference and other events and lots of speaking opportunities. So it's working. Um, I still have a lot of work to do, but it's working. And I just feel that for all of us, we want to kind of, you know, we're all our own brands. This is a really great way to do it. It takes a very little bit amount of money, just time, but it can benefit you many times over. So that's what I think about that. And then finally, in general, we've talked about learning a lot. It's an excellent, excellent learning opportunity. Just you'll learn about interviewing people. You learn about doing a little audio design, audio editing. All these skills are very valuable just to be able to know and understand if you hire someone to do it, but you know what to, what to do as well. It will really benefit you to kind of understand and maybe give them some proper direction. You'll also be able to understand and respect a lot more about what maybe the AV people that you're partnering with have to go through, why they're so... Um, focused on getting good sound and making sure that, you know, you hold the microphone the right way, that'll just give you a further appreciation of what they're doing as well. So I view it as an excellent learning opportunity and, you know, just try it, go for it as well. That's the 10th reason. So now this is my contact information. Um, and I wanted to leave enough time at the end for questions. So I'm sure Jesse will be able to let me know what questions you have and I'm here to answer them. Feel free to reach out to me on email or all the socials. And then if you're interested in turning some of your events into podcasts, I'd love to talk to you about that as well. Awesome. Thank you, Amani. And it's actually going to be me interviewing. I <laughs> uh, uh, wrestled Jesse to get to actually do your Q&A. <laughs> okay. You're definitely more than the DJ. You are a thought leader. You're also VP of education for yeah. your chapter. You give and give and give for the industry and the community. So thank you very much for that. You're welcome. All right, so we do have some questions coming in. One of the questions is, how do they get your Amazon equipment list? People were just dying to know. Yes, I'll send that to you and you can share that um, right away. Perfect, that's fabulous. And um, someone else said they're new to podcasting and she has an Apple phone and she wanted to know, do I pay to be a part of podcasts or how does that look? 
So you do not have to pay to um, be a part of podcast. If you want to produce your own podcast, it will cost you a little bit of money for like a service, like either a Lisbon or a Burberry, where you upload your new episode and then it'll distribute it for you to all the platforms like Spotify, Apple, Google, all those places. It'll cost you a little bit of money for um, the equipment. And I think the ranges, it ranges between like $14 to $35, $40 a month for the, the, the Lisbon service, depending on how much, how many episodes you want to post. But if you want to listen to a podcast or, you know, watch one, it's free. The purple app on your phone, if you have an Apple, or I think you can use like CastBox on the Android, a couple other apps you can use. It's free. So it doesn't really cost you anything. I like to view podcasts as like radio on demand. That's a simple way to, to understand it, but no cost if you want to listen. Absolutely. Another question coming in from Scott North uh, asking, is there a general rule of thumb that says if you have X amount of time for raw recording, it takes X amount of time to edit? Great question. I think in the beginning, if you say you have about uh, 45 minutes of raw recording, in the beginning, it'll probably take you about three, three and a half hours to edit. Once you get more experience, you can cut that down to about an hour, hour and 15 minutes. So you record for 45 minutes, you listen to it for another 45 minutes, and it'll probably take you about 30 minutes to edit. You can add music on the front, the back, add in the advertisements. But once you do it for a few times, you'll get a system down, you get a template down, and then you can cut that time down more than half by doing that. And I think it's just, it just takes time and experience, but um, that's a good kind of rule of thumb for that. Great. We have another uh, question coming in from Kirsten Walker, who's, I believe, uh, is she's actually in my cohort program at San Diego State University. She has a question. If you're recording a podcast on the trade show floor, is there a specific soundproof booth that you recommend or a certain setup? That's a good question. Um, I'll have to look at my notes and see. There are ways you can do it where you can set up some portable booths with um, some of the sound kind of deflectors in it, but that's a that's a tough one on the trade show floor. I'll have to look back at my notes and I'll follow up with Chris, and I think I've heard her answer that question before. That's a challenge also. It's possible. Um, I'll find some examples and share it with her as well. Perfect. All right. Uh, next question. What would you say are the benefits to a podcast versus a webinar? I think a podcast is a little more beneficial because you can take the podcast with you, either if you're in your car, walking around the block. It's more mobile than a webinar. A lot of webinars, you have to be stationary. And so I think that's the main benefit of a, a podcast compared to a webinar. Now, if you do a webinar, I suggest you try to at least turn the audio into a podcast if it works. Um, but for sure, podcasts are more mobile. That's the main benefit as well. And it's harder to share webinars on services like Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Um, YouTube could work, but like the other ones, Stitcher, Google, by sharing it to these services, it just gives you better distribution and a better way for people to find you as well. Perfect. Next question from Susan Bartlett. Uh, what is the ideal podcast in length of time and then the number of people being interviewed? A podcast can be as short as three or four minutes, as long as two hours. Tim Ferriss has podcasts that go two or three hours. So does Joe Rogan. There's some phenomenal podcasts, only five minutes. It's really what you feel comfortable with. Um, and there's some great podcasts that if you have a short podcast, three or four minutes, you can um, fix it so that people can just say, you know, Alexa, let me listen to the short podcast and it'll pop on there. So there's some benefits for the shorter ones compared to the longer ones. In terms of the number of people, uh, it, you can do, like I've done the most podcast people I've had in one interview studio is by three or four. It could get a little much. I think if you have a compelling panel, that's four or five people that will work as well. I haven't seen many people have success with like an interview style show with more than four or five people. Um, but then there are some podcasts where they have different actors and, and they're in there and there's like 20 or 30. So on the fiction side, there's more people for the interviews. My general rule is four or five is probably the most. And that's kind of a rule that I follow, but I'm open to learning if there's more and success stories as well. All right. Last question. How do you reach your target market? So the first key for reaching your target market is you kind of have to figure out where they are. And I think a couple ways to do that is um, Facebook groups, LinkedIn groups, 
I think also do not discount Reddit. If you can find communities that are online that are talking about where your target market is and you can be genuine and authentic and when you're sharing the content, you can find people there. I I think that you can also share it. Like if you have an email newsletter, that will work because people will share it. Also, just networking with people one-on-one and sharing your podcast, especially if you're already kind of networking and work with people in your target market and you happen to share it with them, that's a good way to kind of find and share it with them. So the key is to have it on all the platforms so it's easy to share and then just mention it to people. A good tip would be if some say your target market, it's an association, they have a newsletter or they have a social media platform and they allow you to share it on there, that's a good way as well. Social media is big, email newsletters are big. And then just word of mouth. I think those are the three main ways. Thank you, Amani. You're a rock star. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. And I know we'll be in touch soon. I think we have a call next week, a VPN. (laughs) This is true. This is true. Yes. Singing your praises. So thank you. You have a great day. And then I'm going to get back to sharing my screen and we're going to keep going. We only have 29 minutes left. (laughs) Can you believe it? No, great job today, by the way. Great job. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that.